um, when you go over to the facility and you're getting ready to fade, mm -hmm. how do you get the birds? Well, it's kind of a secret. It's a closely guarded secret. And this is only at Union, right? It's only at Union, but... Um, so a special bird call or something like that? Yeah, you could say that. We have to call them. Oh! Only at you. Right yeah, something like that. They just come right <laughs> in. Okay. So we have that on uh, cassette, and we just play it. <laughs> Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Uh, we are at Union University once again. Uh, uh, we're visiting with some folks, Dr. Huggins and Dr. Junior, uh, or Jr. Jr. Kerfoot. Uh, we, we can call him Junior. Dr. Sure. Junior. He's little Junior Huggins. He, he's he, oh, he's boy. little Huggins. That's right. So. <laughs> little brother. Little that's brother. Right. Little brother. Uh, these guys. Well, he has taken over the facility. That's so right. That's, that's right. right. These guys are great, and and thanks for having us back in y'all's y'all's area here. We're talking about rehabbing animals, uh, and we're going to continue the discussion from uh, a previous show talking about the equipment and the facilities and all that kind of stuff that these guys use to uh, rehab birds and other other animals so should be a fun show um, and I got Miss Amy Snyder Spencer with me today glad to have her thanks her for, thanks to her for setting this up so it should be fun thank you guys for being here and we, and we have one eye Willie with us once again and uh, Jack is that Jack Sparrow no <laughs> that Jack. is actually how he Jack was named. Jack Sparrow Hawk. Oh. The Jack Sparrow Hawk and the students. We allowed it. We had a contest. Let the students name him. And they came up with Jack Sparrow Hawk. I, I so, like that. Aren't you special? So you did well. <laughs> I think like a college student. There, there you go. go. Oh, uh, we know that. We know that. <laughs> is that a good thing? <laughs> okay. I was in college once. Um, but he anyway. is our tech guru, so <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so let's get on to the details of, of a rehab facility, starting out with the equipment. And well, well a lot off. of people think we could just have a rehab facility in the backyard. And, and yeah. you had one, but it's completely different than what people think. So, And your facility is, uh, well, it was larger than I expected the other day. I, I'd actually, all the years I've been here, I've never been to the facility. I just came here and dropped off something. Well, there's a reason that we keep it kind of out of the way is because if you're rehabbing animals you don't need people around those animals and so we put it we always put a rehab center or we should as far out of the way as we possibly can away from people uh, the birds will do better uh, because they just don't need to have people trying to feed I've had people try to when they sneak over there they try to stick all kinds of things in the cages for them to eat, you know, and they just don't like hot dogs. They just don't like, you know, uh, onions popcorn. and hamburger popcorn. and popcorn. Popcorn and, from the last show. Exactly right. Um, but we operate under some very strict guidelines as to uh, rehab uh, cage size, those kinds of things. You uh, Like, for instance, to do eagles, and we are um, licensed to do eagles. You have to have uh, 100 yards long. You have to have a, a cage that is 20 feet high and at least 12 feet wide. Uh, so that uh, the bird will have time to get its wings and to actually exercise. Now, you technically could put them on a creance and, and let them fly off of a, you know, basically a string, a rope, uh, for 100 yards. But uh, that has its problems, too, because 100 yards is going to tangle. And those yes. Things. But we're very much under those guidelines of so much for a barred owl, so much for a great horn, so much for a kestrel, so much. And even down to the point, you know, how injured they are, it, it, with the educational side of things has to be so large for an educational bird that still has flight or a bird versus one that is not flighted. And so what's inter interesting about the, the cages that we have, we have varying sizes. And if we do have an injured, uh, say, barred owl, and uh, the vet um, recommends that we keep the wing tight, we don't want to give it the ability to move too around much too much. To, yep. And so we kind of move them to different cages as they uh, are different phases As they're of progressing their rehab. a little bit, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. We also uh, will often have wire on the outside of those cages that raccoons. We don't want the predators getting exactly, in. Exactly, because mm -hmm. they want to come in and take those birds. 
And uh, in fact, we even try to do a patrol as often as we can to make sure that the bird is not nesting, or not nesting, I shouldn't say, but uh, roosting right. near the mm -hmm. um, the wire because a raccoon will easily reach in, right. grab, and bring that bird over and go for the head. Oh, so, yeah, I'm good with raccoons. I've pigeons and oh, let's not even go there they're, yeah they're <laughs> yeah. terrible so but That's we put wire chickens we yeah. put yes. wire on the outside but then we try to put again a nylon on the inside so it's actually double uh netted, double proofed, I guess. Almost exactly yeah. and the double netting layers. on the inside is there to keep them from getting their their dan their feathers damaged on the wire if you put the netting in there uh, regular bird flight things for like pheasants or quail or something, then there's going to be no damage. But I guarantee you, if you've got wire out there, like our uh, eagle facility is, uh, uh, it places it can hang in there. It, it's uh, what am I? What's the wiring I'm trying to think of? Um, got anyway. chain link fence, yes, and chicken chain wire. Fence. But then we also have nylon on the other side. Yeah, yeah, when I was there the other yeah. day, mm -hmm. that was on the yeah because the bar, um, when the owls flew up and. I've got a picture of him on the top. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Right. You also uh, mentioned last week when you saw the facility that we um, we have some of the flight cages are double doored, and that's important too. Mm -hmm. Just we close the door behind us, and then we open up the main door. We into don't the want facility. anybody to escape. No, no. <laughs> Someone like Jack, a little falcon, they're very quick. Oh yeah. And you just, oh, yeah. you just, it's hard to get get one single door closed in time if he decides he wants out. And he's so. he's. Uh, imprinted i guess you could say but he's, mm -hmm. he can still fly and can oh, fly yeah. away. he'll take off for a little flight and come back oh yeah. Yeah. oh yeah yeah so tell us what these guys what do you feed these uh, birds with at the facility oh well we um mainly we uh feed them mice okay. yeah they grow their own mice. yeah we, we do grow our own mice <laughs> that's and that's, 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 that's kind of kind of weird at. to say uh mouse is kind of like uh you know the best of of the food group right with um like pizza for me it has everything <laughs> uh that I could want it a mouse is for for jack and and for willie here um it has uh, the calcium in the bones it has the meat and the protein that it needs and believe it or not um a lot of birds of prey don't actually you know lap water too much because they get enough water from the food that they eat mm. And, uh, Interesting. So they have a little room inside the facility when you go mm -hmm. in the first part of it. And in that little room, it's basically your mice room. Yeah, uh, a mice nursery. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's got it on two sides, and they've got multiple containers of mice mm -hmm. that you're raising mm -hmm. for the birds. But right. you also feed them other things. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we take donations uh, from deer to raccoon to possum to squirrel. Because uh, I saw it on the board the other day, yeah. raccoon leg or whatever. Yeah. It, that you wow. do have a big board, mm -hmm. and what's on that board? We have uh, on the board, we have the different uh, birds that are at the facility and uh, kind of days of the week. And we kind of keep track of what we feed them each and every day, uh, the weights and that sort of thing. But you're well. also yeah. weighing the birds mm -hmm. and to make sure that they're eating and gaining weight or yeah. sustaining weight. Yeah, the idea is that we want to feed them uh, just right. Um, mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that is it changes based on season. Um, and, and we think some of these birds actually move away for the winter uh, and others stay. Uh, well, at the facility, it can't necessarily do that, and right. so we have to we have to think about you know what would a bird be doing at this time during the year and and make uh, you know corrections for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, keeping uh, the right amount of food uh, weight wise, um, giving them. But you also have some picky eaters. You tell me. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and and uh, truth be told, we just got an osprey in, and 99% of their diet is fish. And so we don't have a lot of strict fish eaters in the rehab facility currently, and, and we did get some donations already for that. You and know, the, a Asian carp would be great. Yeah, oh, there yeah. We go. So yeah. Take exactly right. fishermen, if you get some Asian carp, let's mm -hmm. bring them down here. Yeah. But that is one thing you all do. You do take uh, donations for food. So mm -hmm. if someone has a freezer that's going out locally, give you guys a call because you yeah. all could take that's that meat, stick it in, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's beef or it's deer or whatever, you all can take that right. and you right. can use it for the birds. Uh, uh, they do have a hard time eating some of the processed foods, like uh, if you made deer sausage, that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, some have surprisingly eaten it, um, but I would say probably the majority don't do that. But, um, so raw meat. Raw meat, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, is, is great, yeah. Now, in your facility um, – I noticed that you, there's cleaning products everywhere. So you've mm -hmm. got to keep everything clean. You just mm -hmm. can't, you know, just. Well, yeah. And, and just like, um, uh, I mean, just like a pound or a facility of that nature, they need to keep it clean to make sure disease doesn't run rampant. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, and so uh, we do uh, have cleaning days. Uh, we uh, 
the the mice cage uh, in the mouse house, I guess <laughs> as it were, um, they get cleaned weekly, and so uh, you know we had the litter cleaned out and um, make sure they have water and food. And so now it's just not you two doing this. You no. all actually have some students that help out. We yeah. do, and we generally try to give them a little time here at Union to have a, a couple of courses under their belt. And then we uh, try to introduce them to uh, to the rehab, those who appear to have a proper mentality and attitude toward it. You, well, you we don't talked want about that earlier. You said some of them just want to love on them or pet them, and that's not what it's for. That's not mm -hmm. what it's about. And uh, if you have somebody that's really too fond in that measure and won't listen to instruction, uh, I mean, it's actually under federal guidelines and state as well that the students are not supposed to be handling the birds. They can feed, they can help clean, clean. they can do those things, but uh, Dr. Kerfoot, myself, and, and now Dr. Um, Fern is beginning to help us some too. Uh, we're really the only ones that should be actually handling the birds. And so uh, uh, it's disappointing to the students, but still uh, those who are really into it will... Mm -hmm. We'll fall in love but with it But no we're doing what. what's best for the animal That's again. Right. Exactly so. right. And what, what's interesting about that, we have a lot of zoology students who want to do this kind of thing for mm -hmm. a living, but maybe this is their first opportunity, and it kind of opens their eyes. Uh, <laughs> uh, because maybe this it's not me. just no. about the educational outreach. It's about, well, i got to There's a lot of work here, and, and, and it's not yeah. just fun. It's not just going out right. with the bird. I've got to take care of it. Mm -hmm. i got to clean up after it. And yeah. Those owl pellets that y'all were talking about. Are <laughs> 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 we do have a we, course that... Uh -huh. um, uh, a falconry course is what we call it, where we address uh, the pr actual process of falconry. We don't really fly a bird, again, because of student handling of the animals, but, but we go through everything that would uh, prepare them to take you know, the test for falconry. And that's also open to the public, correct? That's open to the public, it mm -hmm. is, uh, and certainly they can take that as well. Uh, but it introduces them into the proper nutrition, uh, the means to examine. We go over how you would, even though they're not doing it, how to examine birds. One of the first things we do is we look for the keel. Mm -hmm. When a bird comes in, we will look if that keel's sharp here on their breastbone. If it's a flighted bird then, uh, and it's sharp, then we know that they're... Um, They've been out there a while. Yeah, and malnourished. So that's right. We, we want to get food. We want to get water, whatever. Uh, we may do a, a, an intramuscular injection of isotonic saline, something like that, to mm. actually give them uh, a head start. So we'll go through that, how to handle, how to uh, examine, uh, even down to looking for uh, parasites, Mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing as well. Uh, so we try to we try to send them out healthy. Now, yeah. now we do have to get something in here. So um, when you go over to the facility and you're getting ready to feed, mm -hmm. how do you get the birds? Well, it's kind of a secret. It's a closely guarded secret. And this is only at Union, right? It, it's only at Union, but um, so a, a special bird call or something like that. Yeah, you yeah. could say that. We mm -hmm. have to call them. Oh! Only at you. Right yeah, something like that. Just come <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So we have that on uh, cassette, and we just play it. <laughs> so he doesn't have to do that every time. <laughs> cassette. Right. Well, you just told your age. Well, you said I know. Cassette. I know. We're being retro here. That's yeah. what we're all about. Oh wow. So do you teach your students that call? They, well, they use that uh, when they go do to they feed? learn this in the falconry? <laughs> I have some that try. But <laughs> <laughs> now, what's interesting about the falconry class, we've had it a couple semesters now, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's really an interesting class. And at the end of it, they get to take the falconry exam mm -hmm. that, oh. that, that's given by yeah. TWRA. And what's interesting about that, out of how do you how many students do you estimate, 20-ish? Oh, uh, yeah, 20-ish, I guess, something like that that we've had. I think only two have actually, have actually passed, passed. It's a very to become difficult a exam. falconry. Wow, well, I mean, we actually just did a press falconry. release the mm -hmm. other day uh, about uh, falconry permits. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So. And so, it's really cool. Uh, yeah. Do you the want other, to jump to this little interview? Yeah, actually, the other day when I was here, uh, you all had a former student mm -hmm. who worked in the rehab facility for a year and a half. Uh, and Sarah, remind me her last name again. I'm sorry. Uh, Lounsbury. Well, okay. Uh, she volunteered for a, a nice little interview. Little interview. Yep, for cool. a little interview. Uh, actually, like, Doc here threw her into it. So. <laughs> Forced <laughs> he, her into he it. He threw her under the bus, which came in. Hey, guess what? You want to you be on camera? So, but it actually was a very good interview because it was a perspective from a student on what they actually do at the facility mm -hmm. and then yeah, so what cool. she has gone on to do since yeah, she's exactly, left here right. in a very short time. 
So let's mm -hmm. let's cut to that and then we'll come back. Yep. Sounds good. All right. All right, Sarah, when you were at Union University, you were one of the students that worked in the rehab facility. Mm -hmm. So what did you do as a student? Um, so our daily tasks, we like to make sure that our enclosures were nice and clean. Uh, we did prepare meals, took care of our feeder mice colony, um, as well as just monitored our patients just to make sure that they are staying at a consistent level or getting better than they were when we first um, brought them in. Uh, sometimes they wouldn't be eating for a while, so we would want to make sure that between all of the workers that we at least knew that they are eating some sort of nutrition. Okay. Um, what'd you feed them? Um, so we fed them a lot of different things. Uh, we, again, had a feeder mice colony because um, mice are basically like really great nutrition source for a lot of uh, raptors. We also would accept donations from any hunters in the area, uh, raccoons, squirrels, uh, any deer that they didn't want, uh, any unsavory cuts of meat we would take in. We did also uh, sometimes <laughs> went along and uh, asked if we could collect some roadkill as well. It's a really good source of uh, nice fresh food sometimes. <laughs> All right, that's that's kind of entertaining with the, because you know we actually do have people sometimes that want to know how they could help out, so that I would mean, be a good way. There's a squirrel right outside the million dollar entrance that I just told Dr. Kerfoot about, because <laughs> I was like, I could bring that in, and I was like, maybe I need to make sure he's there first. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a student who did the grunt work, what's the good and the bad of the rehab facility? Um, the really great part is being able to be a part of kind of just helping out uh, with nature, returning animals um, to where they're supposed to be. Um, it's really, really rewarding to see that whole entire process. Um, the negatives, of course, um, if there are any losses, um, sometimes a lot of those animals really stick with you. Um, but again, the best parts are also seeing the babies that get brought in um, as they grow up and then we get to see them be released, that's really, really rewarding. So how did you help with the educational outreach? Um, so personally, I got to spend a lot of time with our American Kestrel, Jack. Um, he is a Sparrowhawk, so he's Captain Jack Sparrowhawk. Um, he is a really great, funny little character. He's been with us since uh, he was basically first hatched. Um, he's imprinted on. He basically thinks that Dr. Kerfoot and him are best friends like this. Same with Dr. Huggins. Um, and he's just a funny little character. He likes to play it up for the crowd sometimes. So lots of time talking to people about why we're doing what we're doing here at Union University. That's great. And then you actually got to go on and you did a, a how did you word it again? It's not an internship, it was an externship, externship. okay, yes. at a rehab center in Virginia. Yes, so um, last summer I was able to uh, be a wildlife rehab extern for the Wildlife Center of Virginia, um, which that also really great gave me a great opportunity to work a very, very hands-on with a lot of different animals, got to learn so, so much, work alongside with uh, the vet students that were also doing internships and rotations there as well. Um, got to do crazy things that I never thought I would get to do. Uh, help out with uh, bandaging a bald eagle, taking blood from a hawk. Um, just really great learning opportunity as well as educational opportunity um, to talk to the public about it as well. And that's great. And then you have gone on to, you're now working for an aquarium in upstate New York. So. Yes, yeah, I am from upstate New York originally, so I was able to find uh, something back home, uh, which is really, really great, which um, I was a little bit surprised about because I didn't originally think that I had a lot of experience with fisheries, um, but they really wanted me, and now I am only there for a few months so far, but I'm already working my way up, which is really, really great. Now, what year did you graduate from Union, and um, what's your degree in? So my full degree is a bachelor's in zoology with a minor in management for non-business professionals and I graduated in December of 2018. Wow, so you've already had a great career since <laughs> leaving in 2018, not that long ago. Yes. So, all yeah. right, so what do you have to say for anyone else who wants to 
maybe work in wildlife as a rehabber or in educational capacity? What do you have? What kind of advice do you have for them? Um, for education, uh, don't be afraid to talk to people. It's the first step. It, all it starts with is saying hello. Um, you really just got to make sure that um, you're willing to communicate with them. I think that's the key is talking uh, to people, making sure that they know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why it's important that they care what you're doing. Um, as for people who want to get into wildlife rehab, um, there are some days that it does really stink. There are some really hard things that you have to learn about and go through, but you end up better at the end of it. And it, again, the rewards definitely outweigh the sad times of it. Thank you, Sarah. All right, well, that, was, that was that was awesome. Uh, it sounded like she was a great fit for the program. Mm -hmm. uh, very helpful, enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, and then to come from upstate New York, that was kind of strange. I thought, what, what brought her to Union? Is, is it the program? I guess it is. I think it was the program. She yeah. came in, uh, interviewed with some of us, and, and decided this was the place she should be. Wow. And uh, she has been, well, she was a great student. And I'm sure she's going to make Union proud as she continues on their career. Yeah. Yeah. So she's going back home, I guess, and mm -hmm. getting to work in, in upstate New York. That's, that's awesome. what she got for showing up at the last minute. That, <laughs> and she did good. Now, she was, she she was a zoology major. <laughs> yes. And we do have right. a lot of people that are zoo majors, but we also have a conservation biology major mm -hmm. okay. that uh, several of the students that help us out are in that conservation uh, area as well. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a standalone major where uh, they don't have to go out and do a minor as you heard uh, Sarah say that mm -hmm. she did uh, and so we have enough courses in plant and animal uh, ecology on down the line that that uh, it's able and that's been a well it's been able to stand alone it's been a very in, important program for but us. But it's great that these students get the experience here and mm -hmm. as she has oh, taken yes. it going on and use it as a basic mm -hmm. foundation to to build yeah. and well, for her career and she's She's doing really well. She's doing really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some of the questions we uh, maybe not hit on or hit on lightly here. Uh, this is not a full time job for you guys. Uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, what I say? Don't call every day. Don't ask questions. Well, it's not their full time job. Yeah. So, and, and I know from other rehabilitators, they say that that's one of the complaints uh, back towards the public is. Mm -hmm. They call us all the time and they want to know what's going on. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've got to work and i got to get home and i got to feed. And mm -hmm. it's not your full-time job. You, you do this. Right. Um, you know, on, on some of the busy times, I've gotten calls uh, from the greater public and saying, hey, there's a, there's a bird down. You need to come pick it up. And I'd only get to it three hours later. And, and I'd finally get to it, uh, listen to the message, call back. And they said, well, it's, it's, it's dead now. You, you should have been here earlier. And, and I feel bad. Um, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a professor first teaching wildlife biology or mm -hmm. teaching biostatistics, and, and the students uh, have my attention first. It's not that I don't want to help. It's not that Dr. Mm -hmm. Huggins doesn't want to help. Uh, but, yeah, we— But that goes back to what earlier we were saying. We also give it a little time to see what's going to happen here. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. And so once we get them on the phone and, and, you know, we start asking those questions and try to manage that appropriately. We also get a lot of calls that I'm kind of shocked by that, you know, some lady will answer the phone or I'll answer the phone and, and she'll be on the other line and, and she'll say the other end and she'll say um, I've got a raccoon in the house uh, can you come and extract the raccoon I'm like well what's wrong with it? well it just got in the house I just need and I'm like that's really not well, what we do people get mm. wildlife rehab and animal damage control confused right and, and that's both of those uh it can be found on our website under law enforcement. Mm -hmm. You can find the appropriate one that you need to get a hold of to remove the raccoons or to get a bird that needs to be helped uh, to the right people. So, Yeah, because it's not our full-time job, um, uh, we had talked about um, donations uh, already of, uh, about food and, that, and the like, but we don't um, really get much money at all uh, from the university to, to uh, help with this facility. And uh, so we are on a, what, as Dr. Huggins said earlier, a shoestring budget. Um, we do spend our own money in gas and equipment to yeah. go and get these birds. And um, we're beating around the bushes for donations. Uh, and again, food-wise especially, 
uh, picking up, as Sarah said, roadkill. Uh, mm. yeah, we went and got that squirrel. <laughs> we did have one very generous donor who mm-hmm. donated five thousand dollars a couple of years back, but it was gone. I mean, quickly. I mean, it was so. Uh, it's just amazing how, how fast it can, disappears. That's right. What right. if somebody wants to donate? How, how, how can they? Oh, do that? they can just contact Union University and okay. tell them again that for the rehab center, uh, write us a check or. My, you know bring us deer meat that's bring right us whatever. Deer, yeah. any please, way you can help please or bring yeah. us some yeah. asian carp yeah that so i you know i didn't grow up in in this area so i didn't do a lot of deer hunting and uh, we had a donation of a whole deer and so i'm out there um probably february trying to get this thing thawed because it had been in the freezer and learning how to how to dress a deer and all that stuff from Flo- i'm from florida <laughs> There's deer in Florida. <laughs> well, yeah, and they're like this big, and you're not allowed to touch them. But <laughs> yeah. so I learned pretty quick. Mm. So one other thing, Ken, I see the facility. If people want to see the facility, do you let them stop by? Man, we get a lot of that uh, that that question, um, and and we really understand the the interest in the facility, and because uh, it's pretty cool. But no, we we have it at an undisclosed location, mm-hmm. kind of like uh, Batman's cave, right? His yeah, hey, I only got to see it one time um, in 19 years. So. Yeah, <laughs> um, but we uh, we try to keep the foot traffic, the human traffic, uh, as reduced as possible in that area because our main goal is to release these guys back in the wild. And if they get used to humans, we're we're imprinting them. And even in our act of of just feeding them and trying to you know get them back into health, we're imprinting them too. So we're trying to reduce that. Um, but Maybe the next best thing is we do have educational birds that we can bring mm-hmm. around to uh, uh, different organizations in the community and, like this. and talk about uh, these wonderful creatures uh, that we have here. And we've been blessed to just, uh, you know, be a part of their care. And, uh, yeah, so we do have an educational outreach program for that kind of mm-hmm. We do a thing. lot of churches. We do a lot of schools, you know, mm-hmm. high schools and grade schools. And, and, of course, here on campus as well. Uh, I often do what I call a walkabout, where I would take the bird and just walk across campus. And I'm amazed at how many people just congregate around and want to know, you know, what you've got on your glove. That, that's pretty interesting. I've, I've done it where I've st- stood in the hallway with Willie specifically, mm-hmm. and I'm just sitting there waiting for the students as they go between classes to notice. Everybody's on their phone. Yeah. 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 That would be a great segment for your yeah. social media. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Walk about yeah. around yeah. campus with it. Yeah, that would be. Y'all need to Jack <laughs> does really well for that, though, because he, with his screaming, yeah, we, we can get him earlier. to go pretty easy. Uh, and if the students aren't looking, you just do this number with him, and, and yeah. suddenly he's screaming, and he gets their attention, and you can talk about it. Jack, Walk are you about gonna, with Captain Jack, Jack has a, a trick. Are we going to be able to get Jack to do I don't do know. Trick? Jack, you going to do it for us? No. No. Uh, there, there you go. go. Good go. boy. Good job, right. Jack. He says, now where's my food? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I need to go find the mouse. Yeah, we'll find a mouse for him. <laughs> hey, thank you guys for having us once again. Thanks this for having a, us. This Our has blessing. been great. Yeah. And uh, Amy, thanks for setting this up. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget, we're out on the radio. Uh, we're on uh, iTunes, on Google Play. Uh, and on YouTube and Facebook if you want to watch us. Uh, But anyway, thank you for tuning in. Come back and see us next time, and uh, y'all have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.